last night adida connected with me and for those of you who haven't been introduced to adida i recommend that you look at some of his videos adida a d i d a that is his spiritual name uh a saint to who, who lived the advaitic experience and communicated it to people and who only attracted a few people and not a large gathering like most other gurus he was telling me that i should uh, we forming a community to transmit enlightenment and also uh, introduce it to the non initiates meaning the people who have not have been introduced to spiritual living i have always desisted this idea of a commune because soon it will become some sort of a cult which i did not uh, want to create but at the same time the connection with him was so intense and i kept watching his videos till 3 in the morning and the message that he was giving was just simply not talk simply not explaining the philosophy of advaita which is not two which means you are not different from god you are god but the mind and the ego create the duality and then the whole life is a matter of experiencing the oneness the not to condition of duality and that gives you the experience of separation from unity and the conflict arises with the rising of of mind the rising of ego and all the other uh sense apparatus sense organs memory all these things come then they pull you to uh, either and either meaning that you are like a dust to the wind this is shakespeare i'm like a dust to the wind you are you are tormented and then his main teaching was just to liberate people to experience spontaneous living and where in your experience uh as sort of conflict free existence the commune is necessary for that to happen and i was touched by a woman who was asking a question to arida and i could see the feeling behind her asking this question she was saying master and i could see the conflict 
And I am bound by mind, I am bound by speech. And how am I going to realize this, staying in this commune? The only way it seems to be that I remain maun, she uses a Sanskrit word, which is uh, silence. Adida then says to her, no, you should stop thinking. And here, it is a very profound uh, experience that is being articulated. You can have a condition in which thoughts arise, but they don't arise from your ego, that they don't arise from your mind, they don't arise from memory, but they arise from somewhere within the self. And then, uh, and that some uh, part from which it arises is called God or self or whatever it is. But there has no, there has no, uh, there is no agenda whatsoever, but to just articulate whatever comes out. Because it is the soul speaking, not the mind speaking, but not even the soul as it is understood as a, as a, a, a divided egocentric self, but God speaking, God begins to speak. And in that speaking, there is a community. And that is transmission. And people who are at a level of wanting to experience a non-mind and non and a, and a way of thinking from the non-mind, but purely living in that state of great ecstasy, of no agenda, of no conspiracy, is what is needed, especially in a period when we are challenged by this coronavirus. It shakes your existence. Is there a way to shut yourself off from what is happening outside the world and stay in this state of Adita? Can it be taught to someone else? Yes and no. And now this is what is happening when I begin to uh, talk to you. By being in my presence, there is a level of communication, which is called a transmission. But it, you need somebody to do that. That's why the guru is supposed to be the most important uh, medium, who doesn't have to even open his mouth and speak even one word. But then the transformation takes place by listening to his words and at the same time also listening to his experience of the non-self, of the non-ego, but of God. And that is why a commune is needed. In the commune, you commune with 
the master. And his presence does everything to you. His picture can transform you. And then the purpose of life is to experience that non-duality. And if everybody begins to live that non-duality of spontaneous arising of thoughts of a different kind, which does not have any sorrow attached to it, then you see a different purpose in living on this earth plane. It is liberation. The psychologists will bring it to a very low level and say that this is called uh, a coping technique or an intervention. Those are very, very low level understanding. But it helps. I'm not against it. If you want to understand it that way, that's fine too. But then it is not a coping mechanism of your mind, of your sorrow. It's not just an intervention. It is just understanding existence. Yet, you are also speaking, thinking. But these words come out of not just a desire to give a lecture, in an organized way, and that ruins everything. You just come here, and I'm just sitting in front of this laptop. And uh, there is a tremendous amount of freedom they have. that I just wanted to share with you. A kind of authenticity and that authenticity is being one with God and merge with God and annihilate the conflict. The conflict arises one, once when you Associate yourself with the mind, with the fear, with the present, with the disease you have. All these things bring you to this experience of conflict. You can shut your mind, shut your ego, and be drunk with this super consciousness that is descending into you with no effort on your part at all, but a spontaneous outflow of the fullness that you are, which the Upanishadic writers expressed as fullness, Purnam Madam, Purnamidam, Purnat Purnam Mudachyate, Purnasya Purnamadai, Purnam Yebhavasishyate. He said there is only fullness. There is nothing there out there except Purna. Purna is fullness. You are full. You are completely full. Full of what? Full of bliss, Purnam. Purna is here, Purna is there, Purna is everywhere. If you take Purna out of Purna, only Purna remains, which means fullness remains. Fullness, fullness, fullness. And you can be full of fullness.
and it is necessary that some people have to uh, after the meeting with uh, Adira, and he insisted that I should do that. You should liberate people. You should form a government, he was saying, because which was the, the, his last idea before he left his body. A government to form a government. And everybody will live a non-ego consciousness. And then every guru who experiences it uh, at least did thing to form a spiritual uh, government. The Maharishi uh, founder of the TM movement was my first formal guru. Formed a world government. Then every country has its own kingdom and governors of age of enlightenment, all these ideas. And it doesn't cost anything except for people to come and experience what it is to be full, what it is to experience every second infinite joy without any duality, without any anxiety to go and make money or go and become famous or to do this or to do that. And all these things, they happen on by itself. It's okay. But there is no conflict to push you to go and do these things in order to succeed in this world, it creates not only conflict but also a material which is full of untruth. Because there is an agenda. There is a reward. A reward for consciousness. And now I am here in front of you, and then there, was, there is no reward. Even though I talk about the commune and all these things, I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't think, neither attached nor detached to the reward of creating a commune. And for this moment, I have been very authentic that I just came here in front of you, and I, and I, and I poured out my consciousness. And in this moment, and I just just before I started, I told the few people living here, this is, uh, there is a desire, not mine, but someone, a realized soul like Arida, speaking to me and telling me that you should do that. And these people who, the body, they are they are, they are in another realm. And they, are, they see the pain that people are going through at this at this crisis time, and uh, the media is uh, you know aggravating more the already peace, painful things that are going around. Just dumping information, putting fear of the coming back of the virus in uh, the fall and, and continuing through the winter until you are all going to create the antibodies, in the immunity. So it is a process that is inevitable. And it has happened before and whenever a virus came and until everybody created the antibody, there is no permanent solution. So we so will have a vaccine and then the vaccine 
make sure that we don't have the virus. But then again, there will be another virus. Maybe we, after another three years or whatever. So it is all, you can shut your mind from all these things and let things happen. And you are not touched by it. Now the question comes, is it just an escape from reality? By remaining in a state of denial of mind, of the body, they are going to get back to you anytime. The mind will get back to you anytime to hurt you. The ego will come back to you anytime to hurt you. But momentarily, just staying out of this mind consciousness, ego consciousness, is more like an escapism, not a permanent solution. But for the gurus, we are talking about Arida. Arida. What happened to him was right in Los Angeles. In the Vedanta temple, during the Navratri time, the nine nights of the gods, he was meditating, he was quite young at the time, just had returned from India. Meditating on Kali. And Kali is the goddess of enlightenment. It's the goddess of ego. And she communed with him. And in that communion, that he lost his ego. Once and for all. Since the time he was living, a state of consciousness, full of bliss, full of authenticity. And not putting garbage of anxiety of how am I going to survive in this world? All these questions stop. It's all just the mind concocting. Conspiring, not inspiring, but conspiring. Hmm. Now, you have to be mind free, you have to be memory free, you have to be sorrow free, not through your own efforts. If you do anything through your effort, it will st still help, but it will not be permanent. I'm not against techniques that you may want to do. They are very helpful. And that can and momentarily put you into a different state of consciousness, continue to meditation, but eventually a state has to come which never arises and never dies. No birth, no death. The breath stops and you are breathing internally. The breath is very, very uh, subtle. 
which is the oxygen going in, the carbon dioxide getting out. It's a process that keeps the body and the soul connected, and then that process is discontinued. The body is dead. Now you are dead. But then there is another that goes in, that arises from the bottom of the spine, and then goes to the throat, and from the throat, you experience a different states of consciousness. And that puts you into a bliss too. The most important thing, in any case, whether you use a technique or without a technique, or just observing your, your own existence, not through the mind, but through your own higher self, all that or just talk, unless you experience that. That separation, okay, which is the problem, separation from God, the oneness that you have, is the painful experience that gives you the duality. And uh, the way to end it is being in the presence of an enlightened being. And his movement, his presence, his breath, his words will accomplish that which cannot be accomplished by any other means. Adida was talking about he has been talking about it all his life. The act of surrender to the external guru. And you don't have any life other than just surrender and, um, and participate in the experience of the presence of God, of, through the Guru. That's the truth. And then there is this liberation that follows. You are liberated as long as you are in the presence of the Guru. And he protects you. And how, how do you participate in that by being a, a dead person to your ego, to your mind? Jesus said that when somebody died and wanted to do a funeral, let the dead bury the dead, deny thyself and follow me. So that becomes very difficult in the modern times because you will be considered a, a cult. That's very unfortunate. But anyway, what Adida told me was, you are the one who can do it. Please do it. Create a civilization, a new psychology, a new way of experiencing 
the self and how the self can transform you. He was the true Advaitin who is to liberation and the experience of the oneness without duality. That is the mainline tradition of Hindu mysticism. The Buddha put in different words. You see, call it Nirvana, which is the essence of the mind, the mind and the ego dying. And experiencing this state of bliss. And a community is very much needed. And I just started uh, entertaining the idea after the visitation from Adida. that at least there should be people out there communicating with the fellow beings of this great state of non-duality, of spontaneous thinking, which will momentarily liberate you There are a lot of benefits that will accompany other than experiencing the bliss. But then to speak about the reward that comes of it, then that will put you again into duality. Is there a reward? There is a reward. But you don't care about the reward. You are not doing it for the reward. The moment you begin to think of the reward that you are going to get, then you have lost the purity of of the experience, then you are clinging out to outcome. There is no outcome. The outcome is in the future. That come locks you into the reality. So there is no outcome. Just you are here, and that's it. You have no orientation whatsoever. I've not, I've been trying to, uh, I've not driven a car for so long, many years. The last time I drove, maybe I would say 20 years ago. It was difficult for me to stay focused on the, the gas pedal and the brake. And pay attention to this world. And that's, that was, I tried yesterday. It was because I have completely moved into a different state of consciousness, of duality. I said, no, I don't want to do that. Hmm? And what happens when you when you continue to remain in that state of non-duality, experiencing it, and then when you begin to understand how the uh, hearing works, how the eyes work, how all these things, and separate your experience from all the input from the senses, 
then the building disappears momentarily. It becomes vague and as of a fan thing and then after that it leaves. The eyes, it's the experience is killed. The eyes are open, but they don't see anything. Why? Because the mind is not there. The input doesn't work within the brain. Now, the idea in ancient times within the Indian context that the civilization was modeled after uh, a framework that can uh, give enlightenment or opportunity for enlightenment for retired people. So you retire at the age of 60, say. And after that, you don't want to deal with the world. With your grandchildren or children or management, or managing your funds. All these are not there. You just retire into a wood. The woods are filled with ashrams out to the Himalayas. And then stay there experiencing your consciousness of your true self, of liberation. And now that model has been discarded because of too much involvement into the so called pleasures of the world of retirement, of visiting many countries and getting lost in the Maya. Now, why I am doing this? I am doing this out of an inner necessity to pour out to people and those of you who listen to this will be transformed will connect with me in a very authentic way and would long to be with me since I'm not going to create a commune. Which I could easily do that. By deliberately I have made a decision to do. But with the visitation from Arida giving me uh, some authentic need for me to do what I came here for to do, I should do something. And now technology has made us uh, made it possible that I can come to a place. You don't have to come to my place. I don't have to go to your place. And we don't have to be a common place. I can be everywhere. You can be everywhere too. You can see me. You can hear me. You can feel me. All that is possible. And as I am talking, there is transmission taking place beyond the words. 
there is this silence. You can miss my words, but you shouldn't be missing my presence. My compassion, my joy, my ecstasy. I'm here to give you, to share with you my silence, my joy, my presence, my ecstasy, my non duality. There comes times you experience it spontaneously. And most of the times the mind comes, the ego comes, and you are overwhelmed with this secular self, the ego self, the conflicting. There is a need for commune, but I want to suggest those of you who are interested in following this path of building the, your connection with your higher self and identifying with it. There is, a, there is a need. So you can collectively join together and then watch this video and be in my presence and receive the transmission that will pierce through your eyes, your ears, your nostrils, and your tongue and your entire body filled with his joy. And his joy will never be lost. There was a Siddha Sadashiva Brahmendra. He was a great Siddha who worshipped the goddess Balamika, Bala. Bala is very much present now in the in my consciousness because he is also present in the consciousness of the universe. So one who can give you enlightenment. And I talked about Adidas encounter the goddess Kali. And Bala is also a form of Kali, the goddess. And she has a plan to liberate you too. So I believe that something is going to happen. It's not going to be caused by anyone. If it is divinely ordered, it will help. It will it will happen. But I want to suggest you you watch this over and over and over again. and feel the presence, the stillness. The breath becoming finer and finer. And ultimately merging with your prana, our internal breathing vasi.
So I think, at least at this moment, I will come and do this. When? I don't know. For me, this moment, that's smart. If the divine wants to use this body to communicate to you, to touch you, to hug you, he will. God bless and stay in bliss. Om Namah Shivaya.